Hi everyone, uh, welcome to our Facebook Live. I'm Storm Team 4 meteorologist Janice Huff. Here to update you on the latest on Tropical Storm Fay. Um, in case you hadn't heard yet, uh, that area of uh, disturbed weather that been, we've been watching off the North Carolina coast has become Tropical Storm Fay and is headed in our direction straight for the tri-state area. So let me give you the latest. It will make landfall tomorrow, Friday, somewhere in the tri-state area along the coast, could possibly be South Jersey, could be a little farther north, but right now uh, we know that it will make landfall on Friday. One to four inches of rain is expected, scattered around the tri-state area, Flash flooding likely as a result of all this heavy rain. Uh, wind gusts will be a major issue too. To 55 miles an hour, maybe higher. And the closer you are to the coast, the likelihood you'll see the strongest winds. This will also result in beach erosion at the shore areas. We're talking about the Jersey Shore and possibly even Long Island as well. All right, so let's track the tropics and show you where it is right now. The storm is centered in this area. What you're seeing here to the right of that are the enhanced clouds, the highest cloud tops. This is where the biggest thunderstorms are right now. They're off to the right of the center of the circulation here. All of that is coming northward to our area. So look at radar and satellite shows the spin. You can see a little indication here of some rotation in the circulation uh, that's happening now. This seems to have become, and it has been, become a bit more organized. As, it, uh, as we went through the day, as expected, it received the name this afternoon. So the top winds now at the center, which is here, just off of uh, the Outer Banks, is at 45 miles an hour. Uh, the pressure is at 1,005 millibars. It's moving north at 7 miles an hour. We've already seen it move quite a bit, even this afternoon, uh, from where it was just several hours ago. So it is uh, steadily on the move toward our area. And the current track takes it right through the tri-state. Now, within this cone, it could make landfall anywhere here. We know that a lot of times with these storms, the track can shift, it can adjust, depending on if it runs in the land uh, somewhere along the way. Right now, it looks like a pretty straight shot before it runs into anything, the center that is, until it gets to the Jersey Shore, South Jersey, and then moving across the area. Now, it may shift a bit to the west, but in general, we will all feel its effects starting Friday morning and continuing into early Saturday morning. By Saturday morning, the center of the storm should be north of us and we should be almost clear pretty much of the, of the major effects from the storm. So we're going to take you hour by hour now, starting at midnight uh, tonight. Um, we start to get some of those onshore winds coming in around the circulation. The winds will not be at their strongest yet, but if you're at the coast, if you live there, then you may start to notice the winds picking up later tonight. By 7 o'clock in the morning, we'll see the first signs of rain. It's mainly going to start out as light rain across uh, central and southern New Jersey. The Jersey Shore will see the rain first. It could be heavy at times even early on because you'll be closer to the center. Then we'll take you through to noon. Now, this is all going to come in waves as around most, most circulations, it comes in bands. And so well, one of the heaviest bands will first move through, uh, say, around uh, noon on uh, Friday. And uh, maybe we'll have some thunderstorms with that, too. There could be uh, some strong embedded thunderstorms, maybe even isolated tornadoes, water spouts are possible within the circulation. We have a question from Eric. Hi, Eric. Eric's question is, how rare is it to get a tropical storm this early in July? Well, Eric, it is pretty rare. Usually, we don't get to the letter F until September. So we go start with A, A, B, C, D, E, F. We're at sixth storm already. If you recall, we started early in the season in May. Uh, was it April? Wait a minute. Was it April or maybe we had the first storm? April. I think it was April. Yes, we had the first storm in April. And then, you know, we've been going since then. So now we're at number six and F is usually not until September. Um, this beats the record. This is for the Atlantic Basin, by the way. This beats the record that was set by Franklin, which was in, I think, 2005 was the earliest up until this point. And that was like July 21st when it was named uh, the F storm. And so this one beats that. All right, so we'll take you on through um, at three o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And these are estimates and times, you know. So we'll look at some more heavy rain coming through. And yes, New York City, North Jersey, Eastern Pennsylvania, Philadelphia area, we'll all get in on this. Notice these wind barbs are starting to move faster and get tighter together, closer together. That's see some that's strong wind. Onshore wind right at the Jersey Shore. Not onshore yet here, 
but parallel to the shore for Long Island, still strong, and beach erosion will likely start happening then. So uh, areas up to the west by 6 o'clock in the evening, getting some more of those heavy bands, pockets of heavy rain moving in through New Jersey, maybe even the Hudson Valley by then as well. Another band rolls north around midnight Saturday. Now, the low, the center, is likely to be moving north and away from us. So as it moves north, the heaviest rain will move with it. And then you may not see as much uh, at the Jersey Shore. But you can see that the wind direction changes because of the, um, because of the, uh, the, the, where the low is situated. There have been lots of questions about wind speed. So stay with us. And we'll get to that in a minute, uh, in just a second. We've got that coming up, the wind speeds. All right, so this is midnight Saturday. And then we take you into Saturday morning at 7, and you can see the heaviest rain is gone. Uh, we are starting to see some breaks here and there. Winds out of the south. It does not mean that we won't get some storms on Saturday, you know, on the back side of this or with another system maybe coming through. But that storm, Faye, is moving on into New England. All right, rain forecast. Through Saturday morning, this starts Friday, through Saturday morning, we're looking at generally one to four inches of rain. Um, let's see. We, we, you can see here across Long Island, you don't see the heavier amounts. That's because according to the current track, the heaviest rain will be from New York City westward and down across South Jersey. Two to three, maybe four inches of rain. But that depends on the track. If that changes, it could shift and it could be Long Island getting heavier. Hi, Robert. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Robert's at their home at Seabright. Should we leave tomorrow? Um, if you leave early in the morning, like before noon, I would say you'd be fine. If you want to leave tonight, that's even better just to get out of the way of all the rain. Um, but if you're at the shore, you'll want to get away from shore areas uh, by noon or before noon on Friday. All right, wind gusts. People have been asking a lot of questions about the winds. Okay, so they'll start out on the light side. This is Friday at seven, but you'll notice that South Jersey, Jersey Shore gets the big wind first. So by noon, you're looking at 55 mile per hour gusts already in places like Tom's River, Ocean County, uh, headed up towards Southern Monmouth County. Elsewhere, it'll be 25 to 35 mile per hour winds, and that includes New York City and Long Island. And then farther out to the north and west, it's light. This is at noon. We'll take you to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Winds increase everywhere. Uh, 50 mile per hour winds now reach Belmar. 30 plus winds around New York City and Long Island. And then 20 to 30, maybe 40 across New Jersey and the Hudson Valley. Then we'll take you to Friday evening at 9. Now this, is, this has changed since earlier. 50 mile per hour winds are possible in the city. Um, and then gusts to 40, 50 along the coast. Hi, Jeanette. Um, thanks for tuning in. Will the rain or wind be the worst? Well, that depends on where you are, Jeanette. It depends on where you are. Inland areas likely to see the worst in terms of rain, meaning maybe flash flooding. Um, but in terms of uh, uh, the coastal areas, you'll get rain too, heavy rain. But you would also get coastal flooding by the push of the water from the waves, from the wind. So definitely the wind uh, along the coast. Um, there could be power outages just about anywhere though. So everybody should not let their guard down. Okay. What happens if we run out of letters? You know, we start the alphabet with the letter A, uh, we go down to, to, I don't think there's a Z. W. It's, w, w, right. So we stop at W and there's no Q name and stuff like that. So, um, if we run out of letters and this has happened before we go to the Greek alphabet. So alpha, beta, you know, that's where we start. You start over there. Hopefully we won't get to that this year. That, uh, that's happened before, but hopefully that does not happen this time around. Although it could, uh, realizing that we're expecting an active season. Okay, here we go Saturday morning at 7. Notice that the winds are starting to diminish. The strongest winds will be north and east of New York City because the low will be up here by then. So uh, Long Island will still be getting dusty winds, Connecticut, and through the Hudson Valley. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, we're at name number 6. We had Edouard, which you barely remember that. That <laughs> didn't last very long. I wasn't even here. I think I was off those days, <laughs> Monday, Tuesday. And so, uh, Faye, and um, yeah, I mentioned to you that the letter F name, you, usually we don't get that storm until September. So this is very early, extremely early. And for us to be getting it is, you know, rare enough so early. 
Um, all right, so let's show you the hurricane season on this graphic. Here's where we are today. Here we are, you know, it's uh, early July still. And then things just get continue to ramp up from here. They just keep going up from here. So um, in terms of the intensity of the hurricane season, it's usually September, August, September, early October. So we got a ways to go, people. So we have a ways to go. So I hope that you all are at least have um, a hurricane preparedness kit, a plan of evacuation. This is a good time to rehearse that for sure uh, with this tropical storm. Hi, Jay. How are you? Um, thank you so much. And Jose, thank you so much. I love you guys too. Um, appreciate your watching right now. Okay, what do we have next? All right, let's, we want to show you what you need to know. Here's what you need to know. And this is for everyone, not just people at the coast. This is for everybody. Flash flooding is likely on Friday. Flash flooding is a result of heavy rain uh, over some of the same areas for a long amount of time. It could be, a, you know, you could get like training of storms or you could just get rain that gets dumped on you for a long amount of time. So flash flooding is likely the rain has no, the water has nowhere to go after the ground soaks up enough of it and then it just runs off. So that is likely anywhere, but really in those areas um, from the city westward right now where we're expecting the heaviest rain. Widespread two to four inches of rain is generally what we're expecting to happen. There could be severe storms and tornadoes embedded within these rain bands that come through. That happens very often when storms make landfall. Uh, we don't get to see that much of any of that around here. You know, we had uh, Irene, we've had Sandy, but this is, you know, this is what they deal with in places in hurricane belts, like in Florida. So uh, severe storms and tornadoes are possible within um, these bands that come through of gusty winds and heavy surf, very heavy surf, beach erosion, and likely to be some coastal flooding also. So we're back at the beginning here. Um, what you need to know is that Faye is coming tomorrow and it's going to be around for about, we'll feel its effects for about um, 12 hours, eight to 12 hours. Um, let's see. Hi, this is a question from YouTube. When will New York City start getting the heaviest rain? As it stands right now, and this could change, uh, probably not until right noon or after, like uh, maybe between noon and six, we could see some of the heavier bands coming through the city. Um, it could extend a little bit longer than that into the evening or maybe even to midnight. But right now it looks like that's when we may see some of the heaviest rain. Um, but uh, just know that it's coming. So it'll start out across South Jersey first. That's who will get it first in the morning on Friday. Um, hi, Sherry. Uh, thanks for watching. Hello. Hi, Gladys. Thanks for watching. Appreciate that too. Um, okay, so we're going on. Let's show you some more. Back to where the storm is now. Uh, this is an enhanced satellite picture which shows us the highest cloud tops. And usually where we see the highest cloud tops and they start showing up in these colors, that means thunderstorms. So this is where your heavy rain is. It's offshore right now. It's not hitting any land. It's not going to make a major impact along the North Carolina coast at all because it's moving away from them now. And you can see all that heavy rain is here. Now, there are some storms that have fired up back here near Raleigh coming in from the east uh, with the flow. But um, the general rain and wind, most of it is there. It's starting to move north towards Chincoteague, but should probably just skirt by them. Uh, let's see. Uh, here's another question that's come in. Will the Bronx get hit? Yes. The Bronx, every place in the tri-state area will have some impact from the storm. Bronx, you're looking at wind and heavy rain um, and possible flooding from the heavy rain. So here's Faye. Here's the track. See? The track goes here. This is New Jersey. Here's Long Island. Connecticut's here. And then New York State, Westchester County, Rockland County, Orange, going up to Albany. So anywhere through here is impacted. And the five boroughs are right underneath the square where it says NYC. So that's everybody. Um, that's all the boroughs. All the boroughs will be impacted um, regardless. All right, we're going to show you the hour by hour forecast too. Uh, to show you that it's quiet now, but the clouds are going to start rolling in. I'm looking up at some of our cameras. Um, no clouds yet from the system. It's too far south. So this will happen later tonight. We'll start to see the uh, clouds coming in. Hi, Tara. 
Uh, do I feel this is an OMG and oh my God storm? What are your gut feelings on this? Well, I mean, it's it's not a hurricane. It's not expected to be a hurricane, but that doesn't mean let your guard down. Tropical storms can be devastating for areas. Tropical storms can have wind that can cause power outages. Tropical storms can bring in coastal flooding, beach erosion. Tropical storms can bring a lot of rain and inland flooding, like if you live away from the coast. So um, it's a good thing that it's moving in and out pretty quickly. If it were something that would linger, it could, of course, cause a lot more damage and a lot more concern. But we're talking 8 to 12 hours here. That's not a long time. So it gets picked up in some stronger winds currents here, and then it'll move off uh, to the north. Okay. Well, Long Branch see tornadoes. Any place in the tri-state area could see a tornado. We can't rule it out. If we think there might be severe thunderstorms, then um, there could be tornadoes. Tornadoes are spawned from severe thunderstorms. Not all severe thunderstorms produce tornadoes, but all tornadoes come from severe thunderstorms. So right now the risk is low, but there's a risk. Um, here we are the hour by hour, Friday morning at seven. You can see the rain is inching closer to the city. Light rain to start. Winds are starting to pick up. Then we start to see some of those heavy bands moving into South Jersey, the Jersey Shore around noon. North of New York City, you got clouds and wind, but not much else yet. But by three o'clock in the afternoon, we're starting to see more of those bands shifting north. And within these each individual bands, like this one near Trenton, you could have a spin up. And there could be water spouts even. You know, if you're at the shore, a water spout is basically a tornado that's over the water. And if it moves on land, it becomes a tornado. So you could see water spouts uh, in some areas and they're just, they could be just, they're not usually as intense as a tornado, but they could be dangerous. So you want to stay away from those too. Uh, this is 7 PM and you can see a lot of the rain. It looks to be to the West of the city. How long, how will Long Island see heavy rain? Hi, is it Rena? I think it's Rena. Um, right now it doesn't look like Long Island will see the brunt of the heaviest rain. But that's because that's this is all based on the current track. If the track changes, then you could get some heavy rain too. Right now, it looks like you make it some heavy rain for a shorter amount of time. Like say uh, we go into Saturday, uh, Friday night, Saturday morning. You could see some heavy rain then, but not the whole time. But you will get the wind and you will see that some of the have strongest winds. You may have power outages as a result. You may have wind damage, damage as a result. And you could, if you're right on the shore, you could have coastal flooding. Uh, because of the wind pushing the water up. So here we are at midnight and you can see the wind's still very strong coming in from the southeast, the south, the southwest. And if you're on a south facing shore, you're going to get that water piling up. So that's when Long Island might see some coastal flooding uh, starting around midnight. Um, let's see. Another question that's come in. The same conditions cause tornadoes and tropical storms. It's very different. Um, tropical storms or tropical cyclones are a collection of storms that start out over the ocean usually. So, um, but within a tropical cyclone that spins, you can get individual storms forming. Those individual storms may have tornadoes within those, but um, it's a totally different setup. You, for the tropical cyclones, hurricanes, tropical storms, you need the, you need the ocean. You know, you need the more. You don't need that for tornadoes. Okay. Um, the rain forecast through Saturday morning. So right now, based on the current track, not as heavy. Long Island, the rain. Coastal Connecticut. The farther north and west you go and south, the heavier the rain. So within this area, Allentown, Toms River, Trenton, Newark, the city, Clinton, up to Monticello, could be more than two inches of rain. And that's a lot. That's a large area for the tri-state. So we're looking at New Jersey, parts of the Hudson Valley. The city may even get some heavy rain. And Cecilia has a question. Hi, Cecilia. Uh, what are the expected wind gusts from the storm? I think we're going to show you that now, right now. Um, based on this computer forecast, starting at 7 a.m. Friday, the winds, the strongest winds are moving up from the south. So South Jersey and the Jersey Shore will get them first. So you'll start around seven to feel the wind there. Um, by noon, 55 mile per hour gusts are possible at the Jersey Shore. Um, you'll start to see 25 to 35 mile per hour gusts from New York City 
out to Long Island, coastal Connecticut. And then by four o'clock, the winds just keep getting stronger. So we'll start to see those 30 to 40 mile per hour gusts across north central New Jersey. They're starting to ramp up over the Hudson Valley, 25 to 30, 35, and out across Long Island. Look at Belmar and Tom's River, 50 mile per hour gusts tomorrow afternoon. And then by nine o'clock, might even get 50 mile per hour gusts in the city and 50 mile per hour gusts in Newark. So you can see it's everybody that's close to the shore, or even if you're in higher elevations, you could that can enhance the wind too. So you may get some gusts up here, 35, 45 miles an hour. So probably between 6 p.m. and about oh midnight, I'd say, is where you're going to get your strongest winds. That's the way it looks right now. We get to 7 a.m. Saturday, and the winds are starting to die down a bit uh, south and west of the center. Long Island, maybe Connecticut, still getting some gusts here of 30 or higher at Saturday morning. But then the storm moves out and away from us. Uh, 2020 Atlantic storm names were now up to F. This is Tropical Storm Faye. Our season began early in April with Arthur. And um, the season doesn't typically, you know, the actual start of the hurricane season is June 1st. But we, we've uh, surpassed that. Uh, we started out in April. Faye. The F storm this year is Faye, and usually we don't see that until September. Um, it's the earliest named F storm on record for the Atlantic Basin. You know, the Atlantic Basin, the Caribbean and the Atlantic, has a separate list of names during the hurricane season than the Pacific. And the Pacific has several lists because the Pacific is a much larger ocean. You have the Eastern Pacific, the Western Pacific, you have typhoons, you have hurricanes, cyclones, all different names. But here in our region, um, it's the earliest that the F name, the F storm has been named. The earliest we've seen the F storm. How likely are we to see power outages? Quite likely. I mean, if you, you're getting gusts between 45 and 55 and maybe close to 60 miles an hour, you're going to see power outages. So um, if you're near the shore, then likely you're the most vulnerable for power outages. Long Island, Jersey Shore. Even, uh, you know, parts of Connecticut. But inland areas could see some scattered ones, too. So you're not out of the realm of possibility. Here's a look at the Atlantic Basin storm frequency. Today, we are here, July 9th. Usually, we don't see, you don't see too many storms this time of the year. But it just goes up from here. And this is, this is anticipated to be a very active hurricane season. We could end up in the Greek alphabet. I hope not, but we could. Um, here's what you need to know. Flash flooding is likely on Friday, just about anywhere, um, especially uh, from New York City westward right now at Jersey Shore. Um, but coastal areas, coastal flooding is, is also likely. Widespread two to four inches of rain before it's over. Severe storms and tornadoes are possible, not probable, but possible. So that always happens with land falling storms. Um, Gusty winds and heavy surf, gusty winds that could cause power outages. And just because it's not, it's not a hurricane, don't think that a tropical storm can't do just as much damage, sometimes more so than some of the weaker hurricanes. You know, it all depends on where it makes landfall, you know, when it makes landfall, like if it's a high tide cycle. You know, if you got a full moon, we're, we're past that now, so we don't have to worry about that, but full moon and high tide cycle. So. These are things that you have to remember. Don't let your guard down because it's tropical storm Faye and not hurricane Faye. It still could be devastating for some. So we're getting new data in every minute. Um, we will continue to update you. We're updating the forecast as new information comes in from the National Hurricane Center. We'll have a new forecast track for you at 11 o'clock on News 4 New York at 11 p.m. So I hope that you tune in then to get the latest updates. And um, of course, uh, our weather app, or sorry, our news app, News and Weather, that's the NBC4 mobile app. It's free, you can download that. And that way you can always check it if you're not in front of your computer or your TV and you can check the weather anytime. So thanks for joining us and uh, I'll see you tonight at 11.